If you hold XRP, we have some massive news. This is gonna be some of the biggest news all year that you're gonna watch in this video about the SEC losing control over crypto. A major bill just passed. And also, what I'm gonna do in this video is share with you the best time to get out of the crypto market at the tail end of this bull run. I'm gonna be giving you five key indicators showing you exactly how to time the top of the market, not only for XRP, but for every single altcoin in your portfolio. So you guys are gonna love this video. Comment 777 if you're feeling blessed. Comment 777 if you're feeling bullish. And if you're gonna become the first millionaire in your family tree, confirm it by tapping that subscribe button. Let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So with XRP sitting at 54 cents right now and the rest of the crypto market doing pretty well, Bitcoin passed 70K and it's just sitting at 69K right now. So Ethereum's done very well over the past 24 hours as you know rumors are popping out, news is popping out about a potential Ethereum ETF actually being a lot sooner than everyone expects. And so that's causing a lot of liquidity to flow into altcoins further down the list on you know Ethereum's blockchain and then uh, other blockchains as well too. So Let's dive into this video and let's first talk about what to look for to understand when to hedge out of the markets, when the top's going to be in, because a lot of people are wondering, will XRP miss this bull run or will XRP outperform everything else towards the tail end of this bull run? So I'm going to get into that in this video. We're going to talk about the facts. We're going to talk about the charts and deliver a lot of value with you guys. So pay close attention because the first thing that we need to look at is obviously the psychology of a market cycle. This is the most important chart that you are ever going to look at when you are analyzing, you know, the crypto industry as a whole or crypto projects because the chart essentially and the price action is an emotional tattoo of retail and the entire markets. And so we go through these phases of disbelief, hope, optimism, belief, thrill, euphoria. In a bear market, we see complacency, anxiety, anxiety, denial, panic, capitulation, anger, and depression. Then we start it all over again. And what it's based off of, I'm going to get into it a little bit, that determines, you know, the peaks and the trough and how the next peak, the reason why it passes the previous peak based on global liquidity and all that good stuff, it's just essentially a much more macro version of, you know, the previous hope, optimism, belief, thrill, euphoria, complacency, anxiety, denial, panic, capitulation, anger. And so when we look at the charts, that's why each bull market cycle is larger than the previous one um, based on liquidity. So when we look at all these projects here, and we wonder, you know, what's the best ones to be able to diversify into? If you guys didn't watch my video yesterday, I talked about portfolio allocation strategy where you have, again, not financial advice. Okay, consult your financial advisor. This is all for education, informational purposes only. Crypto is very risky. You could lose all of your money by watching these videos. You're okay with that risk. And, you know, you can do your own research. So I just provide you guys with the information, the news, that way you can formulate your own opinion. But when we look on the day, everything's up. So in a bull market, Virtually everything does well. I mean, look at all these top projects. There's there's not a single one on CryptoBubbles.net that's down. Sure, some of them are up more than others, like you see AGIX at 23%, whereas FTM is 40%, whereas Floki's 18%, and then Ethereum's 29%, Pendle 64%, Beam 31%, Ondo 25%. So it's all over the board, and some of these projects the next day are going to be up more, and then some are going to be down, and then they flip-flop. But overall, as liquidity goes into the market... When we go from, you know, disbelief to hope, optimism, belief, thrill for a lot of these projects, you know, the best move is to literally just hold day traders that trade it in and out and try and like sell a project to catch a pump on another project. Usually the projects that they sell, you know, go sideways or go down. <laughs> Actually, no, they go up and then the projects that they buy go sideways or they go down. So finding projects that you have high conviction in, like XRP, for example, those are the projects long term that are going to do well. And you just focus on making more money on the front end. So let's get into these indicators and let's talk about what to look for to understand this on top of the psychology of a market cycle. Because what we want to be doing on a macro scale is right buying depression, selling thrill, euphoria, and complacency. It's really simple. But how do we identify when we are in the thrill, euphoria, and complacency stage? Because we're not in the depression stage. We're clearly out of that for Bitcoin, you know, because Bitcoin passed the high of 2021. So Number one indicator that we want to look at is the relative strength index. So on the top of the screen, you can see Bitcoin to the US dollar on the monthly. So key key thing here, go to TradingView. If you guys don't have a TradingView account, you could use the link in the description below. Uh, go to TradingView, create your free account. Yes, that is our affiliate link. If you do upgrade to the paid version, we do earn a small percentage and that helps fuel value-based videos like this. So I appreciate you guys for going through our link and I think they give you some discount or something like that too. 
uh, when you go through the link below. But this gives you the ability to put up these indicators here. So on the top, you can see Bitcoin to the US dollar right here. You just type in BTC. You can load it up on Bitstamp, Coinbase, Binance, whichever one. Most of these charts are, you know, all the same. The API is just a little bit different. So the we're on the monthly right now. So you can click the time frame in the upper left right here. And the time frame says M for month. So you can do hour, two hours, one day, two days. But we do the month because on the macro, when these indicators flash, whether we're overbought or oversold, it's actually a stronger signal for us to understand the macro. So we want to look at the, the macro because if you play the long game here, then the day-to-day -day won't matter as much and the price volatility swings in the short term of like 20, 40%, 50% don't matter when you zoom out because there's a lot of doubt that gets built up in these markets when you see your portfolio down 20% or 40% on the week. If you're playing around with higher risk projects that are low market cap, but when you're in doubt, you zoom out and you look at the macro. The first thing is the relative strength index. So you just click on indicator, you type in RSI, and it's just called the relative strength index right here. You can start it and then it pops up. And then what we're looking at right here is the RSI line in purple. We can see the RSI based moving average right here in yellow. And so the number one point that we're looking for is when the markets are in overbought conditions. Now, anything above 70 to 100 is overbought. Anything, you know, around 30 or below is oversold. And as you can see on the monthly, we haven't really gone below 30 in a bear market. We got, get right down to about 40 every bear market. You know, back in January of 2015, we were like 44. Back in uh, January of 2019, we we're at 43, 44. And by like December of 2022, we were, we were 39, 40. And so during a bear market, historically, right around 40 is what we look for. Now during a bull market, well, the last bull market when the peak was in, by April of 2021, the RSI was all the way upwards of, of 89.90, like almost 91 right here. The previous bull run, the RSI was upwards of 90 as well too. And then the bull run before then, the RSI was upwards of 97. So arguably what we want to look for based on the past is for the RSI to be anywhere between 80 and 100. Right now, just recently with this rally that took place upwards of you know 74K by the 1st of March, the RSI breached 70. So technically on the macro, we are, you know, in, we were in overbought conditions right here. However, we were off from the peak of what happened in 2021, 2017, and then 2013 between 80 and 100. So we haven't fulfilled the overbought conditions compared to the past previous bull run. So that's telling me, number one, that we're not at the top yet and we're just starting out because as you can see back here in February 2017, we breached 70. We went to 80 in February 2017, came back down to 70, and then rallied from like $500 upwards of $20,000. So the rally for Bitcoin, very similar to the 2017 to 2018, you know, December 2017 rally for that bull run, more so than the, um, the 2021 bull run. So that's number one. Number two, we want to look at the, the MACD moving average convergence di divergence. And so the MACD line is in blue and this is a, a quicker line. The signal line is in orange. And then you could see the histogram right here. And then the zero line, this horizontal zero line. So what we're looking for, and this is usually a lagging indicator compared to the relative strength index, because we look for what's called a bearish cross. There's bullish crosses and there's bearish crosses. And so a bullish cross is simply when the MACD line in blue crosses above the signal line in orange and the further below the horizontal zero line on the histogram that you can see right here that that takes place, the stronger the reversal signal. Now, on the opposite and the contrary, we see a bearish cross when the MACD line in blue crosses below the signal line in orange and that signals that the momentum has shifted from the bulls over to the bears. Now, because the MACD... Um, bearish cross is a lagging indicator for the top of the market. You can see that the top of the market came in, you know, around March of 2021 and the cross of the cross of the uh, MACD was taking place by January, 2022. Sure. The price action top was November 1st, but the actual true technical top based on the indicators was March 1st based on the relative strength index and also the stochastic RSI. So that's why you don't base your selling decisions on prices. Specifically, you don't want to base it on round numbers either because a lot of people are like, oh, I'll sell my XRP when it gets to $10 or I'll sell my Bitcoin when it gets to 
$100,000 or $200,000, right? They're basing it on even price numbers. And that's rookie a rookie investing mistake because, you know, cryptocurrencies don't move to even numbers. They move based on market cap. They move based on liquidity and lots of other key factors that we're piecing together for you in these videos. And so you don't want to base it on price on the price chart. You want to have confluence based on indicators. And confluence means that when you have multiple indicators saying the same thing, then it's basically giving you a stronger sell signal or buy signal on the other side of the coin. So on the MACD, what we look for is the MACD line above the signal line in orange. We look at the histogram well above the zero line where you can see these like green, these um, dark green bars right here and then these light green bars. So, you know, when you see massive momentum on the monthly, you know, where you just see massive green candle, green candle, green candle, eventually that momentum is going to shift. And so when we're at 80 to 100 on the RSI, that's point number one. On the MACD, it's going to be tough to know when the bearish cross will take place because it most likely will take place after the RSI has topped out. Just like what happened back in June of 2018, Bitcoin was at like $7,000, $6,000, $7,000 when the bearish cross took place back here, whereas the RSI crossed in December of 2017. So that's why we want to add another indicator, and that's number three. That's the stochastic RSI. And so the stochastic RSI, you see, you know, the blue line. You see the orange line right here. Very simple, similar to, you know, there are differences obviously, but similar to the MACD line, what we want to look for is this blue line crossing below the orange line. Now the blue line is the K line and the orange line is the D line. Now the K line compares the lowest low and the highest high of a given period to define a price range. It then displays the last closing price as a percentage of this range, whereas the D line is a moving average of you know, the percentage of K. So not to get too intricate and complicated here, but these two lines are shown on a scale of one to 100 with key trigger levels shown at 20 to 80. And so anything below 20 is oversold. Anything above 80 is over bought. So as you can see right here during the top, when the K line was above the D line, when it crossed below it, you know, a bearish cross, we can see this was March of 2021 at the top. You know, then we saw a decline right here in the stochastic RSI alongside with the relative strength index, alongside with the momentum on the MACD on the histogram as well too. Going back to the previous bull run in December of 2017, we stayed above 80 for an extended period of time. We breached it in January of 2016. And then from January, well, it was actually November of 2015. And then we crossed right here 761 days later. So the stochastic RSI alone is not enough to understand when the top is in because right now we're all the way up here. You know, the K line's at 79 you know, the D line's at 89. So we could technically be, you know, seeing the cross right now take place. And that's what actually happened back in March of March of March 1st of this year. So like about a month ago, that's why Bitcoin dropped from 74, 75 K down to $57,000. But we saw the same thing happen all the way from December of 2015 till December of 2017 for two years anyway. So that's why this cycle is more comparable to that 2017 bull run rather than the 2021 bull run, because as you can see here in 2021, you know, actually during 2019, we went above 80, we saw this cross, and then we saw um, COVID take place, the pandemic, the market sell off. And then for that final rally, when massive amounts of stimulus was injected in the economy, we went upwards of 80, then we saw the cross take place right here. So it was a little bit different than the 2017 bull run. And so because the RSI is sitting at 69 right now, the MACD is still above the signal line and it's below where it was in 2021 as well too. A key thing that we need to look for is also a higher high on the MACD because if you look all the way back in December 2017, the MACD line in blue was all the way down here at like 2000 something. And then by April of 2021, even March of 2021, it was upwards of 10,000. So if we were to just draw a trend line right here, look at how much further the MACD line, the signal line is below this ascending resistance right here. So what I would expect to happen for number three, the stochastic RSI is for us to range up here, you know, above 80 for an extended period of time throughout the course of this year going into 2025. Now, another indicator that we also want to look at is the pi cycle high and low indicator. And this essentially just tells us when the top is in, and it's been very accurate the last two bull runs. As you can see, the pi cycle high came in right here, December 2017. This was exactly at the top when Bitcoin was almost at 20K. The next time that it came in was right here at the technical top on the based on the indicators in uh, April of 2021. So when Bitcoin was at like 64, 65K. So if you would have just sold based on the pi cycle high, you would have done very well. Now to understand how high Bitcoin can do can go, what we want to do is we want to take the uh, Fibonacci retracement tool and then we just simply drag it from 
the all-time high of each bull run to the the low of the bear market. And so from 2017 to 2018, if we look at the extension that Bitcoin pulled, it was about a 3.618, just barely above it for the pie cycle high. Now, this bull run cycle, right, if it's comparable to the 2017 bull run, and we were to do the Fibonacci retracement tool from the high to the low, it just blew it out of the water. It did well above a 4.236. As you can see, a 3.618 would have been around $3,700. And Bitcoin rallied up to 4,900, did a full extension, corrected back down, and then had a final blow off top, you know, all the way up here near 20K. And so if we see trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars flow into the market um, for this bull run, Bitcoin could do astronomical numbers. But if we just base it on what happened the last bull run, and let's say Bitcoin were to do like a 2.618 or a 3.618 extension, the Pi cycle high, we look for that to come in. We watch the key indicators as well too, the RSI, the MACD, the stochastic RSI. Well, a 3.618 would put Bitcoin at roughly $193,000. And if we just simply draw a trend line from the high of 2017 to the high of 2021 up here, even a 3.618 is well beyond this trend line. So that's on a, a good scenario for Bitcoin because there's also the law of diminishing returns as well too. So if we push upwards of a 3.618, from where we are right now, let's just say $69,000, that's 183% for Bitcoin. So I don't think that's too out of the ordinary. I think that's very possible. And to do a 4.236 full extension would be like $227,000. So what price will Bitcoin go to? I have absolutely no idea. Nobody does. So we don't look at the price. Like I said, we don't look at whole numbers. We don't like try and sell at a certain price. We watch key indicators. And one of the most important things to watch is the global liquidity cycle. According to extrapolated data, the global liquidity cycle should peak around September of 2025 following its December 2022 trough. And this goes all the way back to 1968. So how many decades is that? So if we just go seven, 30 years, 50, 50, almost what, 60 years, nearly 60 years of data right here, where you can see the peaks, the troughs, the peaks and the troughs, and it roughly follows it. As you can see during the bear market of 2022, we were all the way down here. Now that global liquidity is trending upwards again, you know, depending on where it tops out at, as you can see, this black line is the true global liquidity. You know, the, the red line is the 65 month wave. And then um, we don't top out exactly at the top of the 65 month wave every single time but we get roughly close to it each time we get like between 70 and 90 and so you know if we hit 70 it's still going to be a good bull run if we hit 80 it's going to be great if we hit 90 it's going to be an insane absolutely ludicrous bull run and i don't see why we shouldn't be doing massive numbers for the market and so we're going to be watching this because right now we're between 20 and 30 on the global liquidity index on this black line right here. And so in terms of the 65 month wave, you guys are early, you guys are just getting started. Sure, the best entry point was at the bottom, you know, when I was making videos in 2022, screaming at the top of my lungs to get involved with crypto, you know, smart people like you that have been around for a while, we're doing that and you guys are sitting up on your income. But XRP, when you look at XRP, what does this mean for XRP? Now, now let's transition this because we talked about Bitcoin for like the first half of this video, which I know you guys are like, get into XRP already. How does this affect XRP? We need to know what Bitcoin's going to do to understand what's going to happen for XRP. Because if I trace up these charts side by side with you guys at the top, you can see XRP to the US dollar on the monthly. On the bottom, you can see Bitcoin to the US dollar on the monthly as well too. On top of the Pi cycle, Bitcoin high and low indicator. So Pi cycle high right here, December 2017. Pi cycle high right here by April of 2021. Where was XRP at the same time the Bitcoin was topping out? Well, XRP topped out, you know, right here in January of 2018. So just barely after, it was like a week or something after Bitcoin topped out, XRP was upwards of $3. Now, if you would have sold your XRP when Bitcoin was topping out, you would have sold it like $2.42. Not too bad, right? I mean, sure, you could have waited an extra week and got it at sold at three dollars and thirty cents but who's complaining you know if you bought xrp at like 18 cents 20 cents even all the way back down here at 0 0.005 and you're selling it two dollars you're in profit right so no complaints there because you don't need to sell the exact top it's virtually impossible to sell the exact top right i didn't sell the exact top for bitcoin i sold at fifty seven thousand dollars but that's a lot better than riding all the way to the bottom and having to wait for another three or four years to catch the next bull run. And so we time these markets. So when is the best time to sell your XRP? I know there's a lot of macro bulls that are like, I'm never selling my XRP because the dollar's going to zero. And while I admire your bravery there, I don't think that's very smart because 
wouldn't have been wouldn't it have been smarter let me ask you this like this video if you agree leave a comment below if you disagree let me know why wouldn't it have been smarter if you bought xrp back in let's say july of 2017 at 16 cents to sell it when bitcoin's pi cycle top indicator flashed at two dollars wait for the pi cycle low indicator to hit again buy xrp in again at like 20 something cents even if you bought it 27 cents and you watched it drop for covid to like 15 cents and you're just like okay well you know, I'm still down, but then you wait for Bitcoin's Pi Cycle top indicator coming again. Look what happened for XRP. It was upwards of nearly $2. You sell again at $2. You patiently wait for the bear market to kick in. Bitcoin bottoms out. Pi Cycle low comes in at like what? It was 18K, $18,000. Where was XRP? 28 cents. This is the best strategy in the market hands down. And it's not even an opinion. It's a fact because you sell at $2, you buy again at 28 cents. You made a profit. Now you're getting a better entry point. So where are we right now? That's the key to understand. Well, the Pi Cycle top indicator is not coming in. The RSI is not between 80 and 100. We haven't seen a bearish cross on the MACD yet as a lagging indicator. The global liquidity cycle is just getting started. The 65 month wave, you know, upwards of 80 to 90. We're not even close to that. We're between 20 and 30 right now. And so all we're going to do is we're just going to watch Bitcoin's chart. We're going to talk about Bitcoin consistently so you understand what's going to happen with XRP. And then we're just going to watch and see what Bitcoin does over the next 12 to 24 months. Now, the rest of your altcoins, okay? What does the entire altcoin market do? Well, what we need to do is look at total two. And total two, simply underneath, like when you click this and you type in total two, it's the crypto total market cap excluding Bitcoin. So it takes the market cap and the price action and everything of, you know, every single altcoin other than Bitcoin that trading view tracks and it puts it up on a chart for you guys and it shows the market cap. So right now we're at $1.145 trillion. Now look at Bitcoin and I traced up these um, vertical yellow dashed lines right here. When Bitcoin topped out December 1st of 2017, the altcoin market topped out one month after Bitcoin by January of 2018. Let's look right here. April of 2021, the altcoin market saw a peak at $1.5 trillion one month later. Sure, the technical price action peak right here was by November 2021 for the altcoin market. And, you know, Bitcoin was topping out as well too, right around like right around the same time. But the technical peak was May of 2021 for the altcoin market and April 2021 for Bitcoin. And so the entire altcoin market, you know, is going to peak out most likely. I could be wrong here, but just based on the charts one month after again, because if it happened the last two bull runs, the likelihood of it happening again, this bull run is very high. We just have high probability, right? We run the law of averages and that gives us an understanding of risk to reward for altcoins. And so with Bitcoin, just breaching barely above its all-time high and it's hovering at it right now trading sideways the next 24 months 12 to 24 months for bitcoin by quarter four of 2025 is going to be absolutely incredible and so we're just looking at the altcoin market where it's at right now and how far off we are from the all-time high too so if we were to measure we're still 50 percent away from the all-time high we're at big whereas bitcoin's at the all-time high so that's giving me personally confirmation that altcoins are lagging behind Bitcoin, which is a good sign because there's going to be more money to be made in the altcoin market than in Bitcoin. Because if Bitcoin goes to, you know, $200,000 or $193,000, does a 3.618 extension. Well, what is that from where we're at right now? I mean, maybe that's what a two to maybe two X, maybe a three X. So that's why we position ourselves in the altcoins within the hottest narratives like meme coins, artificial intelligence, and gaming and then you have outliers like xrp that are in like a whole industry of their own that are also diving into other stuff like real world assets but xrp is global liquidity payments now here's some big catalysts and here's the biggest news that is taking place right now that is segueing the growth of you know crypto for this whole bull run it's the deploying american blockchains act that was back in 2023 has passed the house so what this does is this removes the power from the sec over Ripple XRP in the entire crypto market. And the secretary shall serve as the principal advisor to the president for policy pertaining to the deployment, use, application, and competitiveness of blockchain technology or other distributed ledger technology applications built on blockchain technology or other distributed ledger technology tokens and tokenization. So this is incredible, guys. This is massively bullish. Now, at the same time, too, when we look at this, RippleNet is the legal framework that allows financial institutions and central banks to use XRP and other digital assets, you know, including stable coins backed by hard assets for trade and cross-border transactions. Check this out. 
Speaker, if you're working on something bigger in your head, the idea that we're going to see a vote on stable coin, could we see a combined bill like what was being discussed with the FAA, for instance, where stable coins, safe banking, executive clawbacks are all put into one vehicle to garner more support throughout the body? That might be something towards the end of the year, Joe. But I think right now you're talking about just two very specific pieces of legislation. One is creating a framework so that entrepreneurs uh, and innovators, those who want to invest in great projects, do it right here in this country so we don't ever experience uh, this uh, uh, issue that we had with someone who's outside of the reach of uh, the United States uh, oversight. And then we've also got a central bank digital currency bill on the floor, which mm -hmm. literally says the federal government could create one, but they're going to have to get authorization from Congress, and it's going to have to emulate cash, which simply means that any digital currency issued by the government must be open, permissionless, and private. It can't be used like the Chinese are using the digital yuan, which is basically a surveillance tool where they're building social scores on their citizens based on their purchases and their behavior. We can't have that in this country. That's un-American. We need a uh, digital currency that actually uh, is consistent with American values. I would like to enter into the record this Wall Street Journal article from April 14, 2023, detailing China's ploy to open its banking system to crypto firms in an effort to seize an opportunity created by our hostile regulatory environment, which, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, you're a big With, part of. Without Look, objection. Chair Gensler, FTX was domiciled abroad and so is Binance, yet American consumers still had access to both. You can't really think that pushing this industry abroad is going to protect American consumers when it hasn't several times in the past on your watch. You say the crypto market is rife with non-compliance. However, existing SEC rules make no sense for blockchain-based companies and following them would actually kill these businesses. Your regulatory style lacks flexibility and nuance, and as a result, you've been an incompetent cop on the beat, doing nothing to protect everyday Americans and pushing American firms into the hands of the CCP. Your intention to work against SEC mission and put American investors in harm's way has been made very apparent, sir. It's been a year and a half since you've appeared before this committee. You need to answer to Congress about the issues that you've had with the SEC staff union, the work environment you've cultivated at the SEC that's led to hemorrhaging of senior staff, the intellectual inconsistency of your regulatory treatment towards Bitcoin spot ETFs, and your politicization of capital formation opportunities time through your expired. treatment of certain specs. And that's just to name a few. Now, interestingly enough, this is starting to come out with Ripple to name their new U.S. dollar stablecoin RLUSD. So Ripple's latest trademark filed May 7th this year hints at a stablecoin potentially being labeled, you know, RLUSD. So this does this stand for Ripple Labs USD? What could be the hidden ties here with the Federal Reserve and what they're planning for this? It's all happening behind closed door meetings right now because the SEC's Sunshine closed meeting on Thursday, uh, May 23rd in a few days has been canceled. So Ripple versus the SEC lawsuit has been going on for a few years now. Like I talked about in previous videos, could it be to suppress the price of XRP so these financial institutions could load up at these low prices around 50 cents? Because there's over 1,700 non-disclosure agreements that have been signed regarding Ripple, regarding XRP, massive financial institutions. And XRP is being integrated as the settlement layer in multiple trillion dollar industries so global capital markets finance gaming payments forex you know etc and so when we bring up these documents for you guys that show proof about the underlying ledger which is the ripple xrp main ledger being used for facilitating cross-border payments in this video explains how the adoption of the iso 222 standard is giving ripple advantages as a company when the banks go into the final stage of making the shift well, ISO 2022 is a global um, like agreement on the information that moves with a payment from you know, a sending bank or payment company to a receiving bank. And the reason it's so special is that it creates the ability in a very flexible way to put in very clearly defined information in, in, in large amounts if that's, that's required, for example, wrong addresses, wrong names, descriptions, so that the sending and receiving counterpart, payment company or bank, can exchange a payment, exchange value without having failures or the failures or the, um, the rework or the manual intervention that many of the old standards um, you know, create. So I said 2022 has been around for a few years now and it's gaining momentum 
very quickly. I think as the world's moving to a more digital first uh, model, i.e. more payments are delivered either through uh, machine execution or through you know, apps on people's phones or your marketplaces, the value of having a really powerful, strong standard for exchanging those payments, you know, people to people, marketplace, marketplace, buyer to seller, without having the kind of like the overhead of manual rework and having to second guess what the payment's about, really powerful. And for Ripple, taking that model into the blockchain space, it gives us a big advantage because we can, from the get-go, facilitate highly um, um, automated payments end-to-end. What we can also give back to ISO 2022 is advice, help, suggestions about how the standard can be extended into a truly internet world and into the kind of cryptographic um, element that really underpins Ripple. So kind of giving and benefiting both ways, if you like, from Ripple's uh, membership of, um, of ISO. Now, why is all this important? Why should you even care? Well, it's because ISO 222-based APIs is what will allow distributed ledger technology and crypto assets to be integrated into the SWIFT platform and allow the interoperability of digital assets with SWIFT's 11,000 members and banks. So the migration to ISO 222, it's already happening, but by November 2025 will be the last date where everyone has to be on the, the system. And so going back to the global liquidity cycle projected to peak around September 2025. That's roughly around the same time that the crypto market will be peaking, that all these banks and financial institutions are going to be on the new ISO standard. And when we look at the projects that are ISO compliant, well, Ripple's XRP is right there, Stellar's XLM. We could see HBAR, we could see Quant, we can see IOTA, we can see XDC, we can see Algorand. So you guys are very, very early right now. In 2025, the ISO narrative is going to go full mainstream when this happens. So just remember where you heard it first here on the Bull Runners channel and subscribe if you guys want to get early alpha that sometimes might be too early for the masses because we're like a year or two years off. So it's exciting because you know, you're going to live a lot longer than a year or two. And if you're not, well, then none of this matters anyways. You should probably just go on, sit on your farm, smoke some stogies, hang out with your dog and your family and enjoy the rest last year or two that you got. But if you're going to be around for the next few decades, then what's one to two years for the rest of your life? Look at the U.S. debt clock right here. When I was in high school, this was at $7 trillion. It's at $34 trillion right now. So, you know, during COVID, during the Federal Reserve, you know, adding to their balance sheet, doing quantitative easing, they added more money back into the economy during a few months than the first 200 years of the United States of America being formed. And look at this, every single second, it's just skyrocketing. Now, one thing that's interesting is on the right-hand side, you can see uh, the dollar supply now, you know, dollar to silver ratio over five years, dollar to silver ratio over a 10-year period, dollar to gold ratio. Why does it say that per ounce of silver, it's $1,559 per ounce? Is that the real realized price of silver over the next five years? You guys tell me, dollar to gold ratio over five years, $12,600 per ounce. Now look at the G7 GDP to gold ratio, $72,000 per ounce. BRICS GDP to gold ratio, $136,000 per ounce. So for those of you guys can, that can explain what this means to me, this basically means that silver, gold, precious metals are going to go through the roof. And when that happens, crypto is going through the roof as well too. So you need to be ready. You have to be positioned to secure your financial future. So if you're ready to become the first millionaire in your family tree with crypto, and you want to get early access to our underground guidebook to become a crypto millionaire when it's released, then all you need to do right now is go to bullrunners.com and you're going to get exclusive early access to alerts on explosive altcoins with timely notifications about high potential projects before they hit the mainstream market. You're also going to get access to daily market analysis videos where you can watch daily videos like this to stay up to date on the latest trends and updates in the cryptocurrency market. And you're also going to receive pro trading strategies strategies and tools for you to access proven trading tips and institutional grade indicators to refine your trading strategy. So don't miss out on the launch of our new underground guidebook called Altcoin Secrets that's going to help you discover the next 100x altcoin. All you need to do to get early access is go to bullrunners.com, click the button on the page, put in your best email address, and you'll be instantly subscribed for the early bird list when it's released. We know you're going to love it.